Today you're gonna see a treatment visit with our lovely patient Kim, who has a pretty degenerated hip joint. Enjoy. Kim is a little bit unique. She only had pain for about one month before she came into our office at Bareford Rehab. Typically, we see patients who had pain at least six months before coming in to see us. However, she had pretty intense pain. It got up to 10 out of 10, which is the highest pain level could be, and she saw eight doctors for it. She had an MRI and she had a pretty severely degenerated hip joint. A lot of her pain came from going upstairs and she had very sore hips when walking. So this was indicative that her hip joint and the cartilage was causing the pain that she was having. So going up the stairs is a 6.5 out of 10. Correct. How intense is it right now standing now? Mm, maybe about a three. I mean, it's just there. Achy? Yeah, achy. Straight leg raise to see how restricted the tissue is, slap side nerve. Juan, what do you feel here? Pulling. Where's the pulling? How intense? Uh, maybe it's about a seven, seven, eight there. One of the things that Kim told us when we were doing the exam, she said, you're the ninth doctor I'm seeing and you're the first doctor who is touching me. And this is something we've heard a lot from people who have chronic pains that no one's been able to fix. No doctor is actually getting in there and feeling the tissue, which hopefully is an obvious problem because how do you figure out which tissue is directly damaged unless you're feeling all the tissue? Because usually the tissue is gonna speak to you. And one of the things we do in our exam is we try to provide provoke the symptoms by pushing at the tissue that's damaged. So if, especially if there's a nerve entrapment there, when you're able to reproduce the symptoms by pushing on a specific spot, that's a really good sign. Adhesion release methods treatment is gonna work to get somebody sustained permanent relief. You'll see how this goes in the treatment visit today. Her sciatic nerve, she has really good range of motion, but if this is all compromised, it's gonna not center the hip joint in the socket and she's getting pinching, mainly pinching and pain going down the front of her thigh and this trails after. So I just want her hamstring firing appropriately. I noticed my hands weren't getting the best treatment and I think this might be easier for everybody. So if this is in her hamstring where it meets the quad, so I'm feeling a glob of adhesion right here. The radial shockwave can't work unless the tissue's under tension. And even then, it needs to be a lot of tension. So we'll see in the next five to 10 seconds if it's softening. And it's softening, so it's working. So I take my finger right next to the shockwave and I wanna make sure that it feels like it's loosening. So I'll just move it out of the way and then go back over it. And if it wasn't softening, then I would just stop because I need to use my hands. But since it's working, it makes everybody's life easier. Sometimes people get an idea if you move this way or that way, I'll feel more in the front of the hip. Ideally, you're feeling a little bit more pain. If it's too much, then obviously we won't stop, but I want you to be feeling in the front of your hip. Okay. In case. Let me know if it gets worse or gets better in the next five seconds. Better. For radio shock wave to be effective, you usually want to be provoking the symptoms that they're having. So I was putting her in that position that provoked the front of her hip because that's where the socket, the joint, the hip's moving forward. So I wanted to provoke the cartilage and if the shockwave provokes the symptoms, that means that the stem cells are proliferating in the spot where the cartilage degenerated. So for the, for the shockwave to be effective, it needs to get the stem cells in the spot and how the body tags that spot is by provoking the symptoms. 
She is seven visits in and she's about 8% better. I'm doing the best I can with Kim. She's so lovely in managing her expectations. And I keep reminding her that a hip replacement still might be on our radar, depending on how she progresses and how much relief she wants. If she's not able to get to the full activity level, when I've removed all the adhesion, all the muscle in her belly and her butt cheeks and her quads and her hamstrings are fully adhesion free and they're soft and they're firing, but she's still having a lot of symptoms. I told her that she still may be a candidate for a hip replacement, but with a positive attitude and she's got a healing mindset, she still may continue to heal, especially as she's continuing to strengthen and bring other muscles up to standards that will allow her hip joint to not be so overloaded. If you'd like to see more about how we fix chronic pain at Barefoot Rehab in New Jersey and with adhesion release methods across the world, hit the like, hit the subscribe, and stay tuned for more videos that we will be releasing each week.